thank you for the introduction, and I'm glad to hear that uh, Zalora is your favorite site. I hope there is a, <clears throat> a few more fans in the audience. Uh, what I will try to do in the next 10 minutes is uh, give an overview of uh, what is Zalora to the people that may not be familiar with us, and maybe give an update to where we went since the presentation last year to the ones that actually are familiar with what we do. In a nutshell, uh, for whomever has not been on a site or whomever does not have the Zalora app on their, on their smartphone screen, Zalora is the largest fashion uh, e-commerce in Southeast Asia. We launched the company four years ago and we are uh, in, the, in the vertical, the dominant player in the region. Yeah, so Zalora is part of Global Fashion Group. We have uh, a year and a half ago, we merged with other uh, five companies globally uh, into Global Fashion Group. So Global Fashion Group now owns 100% of Zalora. What you see on the map is where the other companies operate. They are all fashion e-commerces operating in other geographies. The team has been uh, stable for quite some time and what we have been doing over the last few years uh, has been over the last, uh, I would say, a year, year and a half is adding a few senior, a little bit of senior talent in certain parts of the organization. Uh, we have a new CFO that joined a few months ago uh, with a lot of experience. We have a new CCMO coming on board very soon. So we've been investing in uh, growing the team stronger. And at the same time, this is how, how our, uh, our site look like. I, I could have, I'll show you the app in a second, which is becoming more and more relevant. But this is the Indonesian site. What I'm, uh, what I would like to, uh, to show to you is uh, a couple of things. One is <clears throat> it's a local language site, so we are trying to be as local as possible wherever, but at the same time, we leverage our regional scale. So what you see here is when we launched Ivy Park. Ivy Park was an exclusive brand to Zalora, manufactured by the Arcadia Group, so the group that uh, does Top Man Top Shop, uh, together with Beyonce. We had the exclusive right for Southeast Asia, that is thanks to the scale that we have. But on the other side, we offer to Indonesian customers with delivery in, you know, name and city in Indonesia on a site or app that is in local language with a customer service center that responds in Bahasa with uh, the ability to pay cash and delivery in, of course, Indonesian rupees, et cetera, et cetera. So we try to be as local as possible, but at the same time, leverage wherever possible the scale. The Ivy Park example is a good one, I would say. What the problem that we solve, and uh, this is uh, to quote Patrick's speech earlier today, so I think it's very right, that it's very important to understand what you're trying to solve. The, pro the problem that we try to solve is give access to the latest high street fashion to consumers in Southeast Asia on one side, and give to the brands access to a lot of consumers that live in Southeast Asia. And what we do to, uh, what we offer to consumers is a very strong portfolio of global brands. You see a small representation of them here. We actually have more than 500 brands. We have the Superdry, the Topshop, we have Nike. We just launched Adidas in uh, Indonesia a few weeks ago uh, with Mango. We, we sell Ray-Ban, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go through the whole list. We couple that, again, I'm going back to the localization effect, with a curated selection of the best local fashion labels. So in, uh, in Malaysia, we would have uh, the likes of Vinci. We have all the most important Muslim wear designers that every year during the Raya season, so right now, uh, design exclusive for Zalora uh, Muslim wear festive collection. Here you see Rizalma for Zalora. We also partner with Jovian, that big J there. Uh, we have uh, helped a Filipino sunglasses brand called Sunnies go regional. So we work with a lot of local brands and try to be as relevant as possible in each of the single markets where we operate. Together with the global and the local brands that I just mentioned, we also have a strong collection of private label. Our main private label brand is called Zalora. We also have a Muslim wear focus brand called Zalia. Uh, if you live in uh, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, or Singapore, you will find today, uh, during this period, our Zalia festive collection for the Ari Raya period, and, uh, which is... Uh, selling uh, very well and uh, getting strong appreciation from the market. Again, it's a synthesis of trying to be global, bringing the latest fashion that you see on the high street of everywhere in the world at, with a local customization, with uh, the attention to the local details, 
uh, and at the same time with uh, you know, some innovative ideas like the, uh, the Muslim wear, uh, ready to wear that we've, uh, uh, that we've launched a few years ago. When we talk to the brands or the partners, we offer them a variety of ways to work with us. So, and we are what I call fulfillment model agnostic, meaning that I don't really care if we can help customers get access to a particular brand through a marketplace model, through a pure outright model, through a consignment model, or through a combination of those. What I do care is to give to customers access to the best high street fashion in, uh, in a way that gives them ideal customer experience. So speed of delivery needs to be there, cash and delivery needs to be possible, um, customer service needs to be uh, adequately uh, informed about the quality of the product. Uh, we use, uh, uh, so we, we're, I'm not going to say we're going to be 100% marketplace or we're going to be 100% retail. The reality is that over time we evolve as, as the ecosystem evolves, as our partner become able to actually uh, ship in one, two, three days to the end customers and they want to work with us on marketplace, we're happy to have those discussions. At the same time, we're happy to provide those services for the partners that are not able to do that. We have uh, focused very early on on uh, creating the best customer experience possible for our customers. Best customer experience means a lot of investment in the full supply chain, so getting the products uh, to, our, uh, to our customers. We have three warehouses, one in Kuala Lumpur, one in uh, Manila, one in Jakarta. We used to have seven, so we simplified the business very dramatically over the last three years. Uh, and we are able to ship on average with 2.3 uh, in 2.3 days from the order. So we are very consistent and we track, of course, those metrics very quickly. I'm not gonna go through the statistics. The logic behind what we do on the operational side and the supply chain side is ensuring to each customer every time the best possible experience that they can get wherever they live. If you live in Kota Kinabalu, you're probably not used to receive uh, anything and with the next day delivery. And that's what happens to most people that order for Kota Kinabalu. We, we promise one to three days, but in reality, most deliveries will happen in, on the next day. And going back to the access story I was talking about earlier, this means that if you are a Kota Kinabalu, 30 years old lady, and want to buy a Topshop dress, you have two options. One is to fly to Kuala Lumpur, go to the Topshop uh, top store, find a dress, fly back. The other one is take on your phone from your pocket, open the Zalora app, and you have a top shop shop in your hand, and the next day you will have a dress for you. Worried about sizing, worried about the fitting, no problem, free delivery, we pay per for the return back. So the focus on customer experience and giving access in a, as a trustworthy as possible and risk-free as possible way to customer is the key of what we do. On the payment side, it was, it was mentioned a few times earlier today, the payment is together with delivery, one of the blockers of expansion uh, uh, for internet business in Southeast Asia. This is, of course, a problem that we tackled very early on. We offer cash on delivery everywhere, which is uh, a, an important part of, uh, uh, represents an important part of our transactions. We also offer local, uh, local payment system in every country, and every country has two or three different payment systems. Since the very early days, we're trying to be innovative in the way we do marketing. And for instance, we pioneered the click and mortar uh, solution. We actually were among the first globally to do a, a click and mortar pop-up store. Uh, you, you may have, if you followed the lore of the last few years, you, you may remember that we have uh, opened three to four months pop-up stores in uh, various cities of Southeast Asia. We started in Singapore, we did it, we did it in Penang, we did it uh, in Hong Kong, we did it in Manila, we did it in Jakarta. Uh, and those was, uh, uh, those are things that we continue to do to engage with the customers in a different way. What we did over the last four years is we built a platform of fans and customers of ours that is now meaningful. We have uh, uh, 6.5 million fans on Facebook. We've served more than 4 million customers today. So there are four, more than 4 million people that have purchased from Zalora today. The number starts to be significant. Again, you can look at the other way around and say you only serve 4 million people out of the half a billion that live in the region, and that's why we see a lot of upside ahead of us. Uh, and uh, to continue with the numbers, we have more than 10 million people that have downloaded our app. So there is more than 10 million people that have in their pockets a fashion store. 
We have pivoted very, very early on toward mobile, and now, as of today, more than 70% of our traffic, and uh, more than that in terms of revenue, actually comes from either our app or our, um, or our mobile website. And uh, we are continuing to innovate to make sure that the platforms that we use to uh, solve the access problem I was mentioning earlier are as up-to-date, as engaging as possible. And uh, uh, we have, in fact, a few new releases coming, uh, coming soon to both Android and iOS. In terms of size, we've been growing very strong and we're continuing to grow strongly. In Q1, we shipped more than 2.5 million items. Um, as I mentioned earlier, st size starts to be significant. The company was launched in Q1 2012, between Q1 and Q2, and you see how uh, growth was uh, you know, picked up over time. We're still growing very, very strongly. The little dip you see in Q1 is a seasonality topic, uh, and, uh, uh, and we see you know, growth over the course of the year, also 2016, coming up, coming very strongly. As uh, we are now entering our fifth year of life, we have, over the last uh, 12 to 18 months, been focusing more and more on uh, bottom line profitability. We have uh, worked across all our PNL. We have simplified a lot of the business. As I mentioned earlier, we went from seven warehouses to three in the span of a couple of years. We have um, reduced our fulfillment cost significantly by moving out of Singapore, for instance. And there's a data point, we have the same fixed cost that we used to have in Q4 2012 when I, uh, when I, uh, when I joined the leadership of the company uh, is today. So we, are, we kept our fixed cost flat over the last four years as, as the business grew 10 times. Oh, I skipped one. Can you go back one? Sorry. This is supposed to be a video. Yes. So you would expect a different video from a fashion company, but I thought this was interesting to see. This is our new Malaysian warehouse, where we moved in uh, March this year. For the investors or people working in the financial industry in the room, they would appreciate that we invested zero dollars in capex and equity financing in doing this it was fully financed through non-equity and this brought our fulfillment cost down by a significant amount so the first part was the building this is the move so this is when we move from one warehouse to the other we built an expertise over the last few years in moving warehouses move 1.3 million items over 48 hours, and customers didn't notice. So we actually kept our delivery promise intact during the full move. Next time, I promise I'll bring a fashion, a fashion uh, video rather than a warehouse one. A bit more sexy. The reason why I'm showing this is that I think this uh, exemplifies the, uh, the way we're looking at things. So we are looking at things in a very scalable manner. So we now got to the size where uh, it made sense to make... Can you go back? Sorry, before I go here. We, thank you. Uh, we, went, uh, we are now at a size where uh, it made sense to really move into a facility that can accommodate us for the next uh, five to ten years. It's a, a facility that can grow with us, uh, and, uh, and that's the type of approach that we're now using in every decision. This is just one example of somewhere where we took the decision of really taking a long-term view at this point, uh, again, financing not with equity instruments, but rather finding ways to finance it differently, uh, but focusing on how we can really reduce our unit economics, improve our customer service, and do it in a, in a scalable manner. This warehouse is in uh, Shah Alam, just outside of, of Kuala Lumpur. As part of the simplification, I, uh, I said earlier, we also sold the, our businesses in Thailand and Vietnam, which, as you can see from the, uh, from the pie, were a smaller part of our business. And the logic here is to concentrate on what internally we call the cluster, which are the more developed market of Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, where, we are <coughs> where the leaders were strong and the markets are a bit more developed, and on the very fast-growing emerging markets of the Philippines and Indonesia, where also we are the undisputed leaders in, in the fashion vertical and where we've seen uh, strong growth coming on this. And this is, with 38 seconds remaining, 
it's uh, uh, what I wanted to uh, update you all on Zalora. I will be around for, for the rest of the day in case anybody wants to reach out for any questions. Thank you very much.